Welcome to Shape by Faith with your host, Teresa Rowe. To find out more about Shape by Faith and Teresa Rowe, please visit shapebyfaith.com or visit the YouTube channel, Facebook, or Instagram. And now, here is Teresa Rowe. Welcome to Shape by Faith. We shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. We have a special guest on Shape by Faith today, Christine Vallis. She's a good friend, and she's author of... His appointed times, and she's been blessed with the privilege of uncovering the Lord's prophetic calendar in real time. It is so amazing. Christine, I've learned so much from just listening to you teach and share on YouTube. I love your chalkboard teachings. You do so much. And the thing is, Christine, you Mm -hmm. make it simple to learn and enjoyable. So thank you so much for doing what you're doing. And um, Absolutely. Yeah, and we're going to get into the calendar um, this month, but I wanted to ask you um, just before we begin, like, you know, what do the scriptures say about God's calendar and time? I mean, if people were to ask you, like, Christine, you know, like, how how did you find out that? Like, you know, where does mm-hmm. it say in God's word that there's a specific calendar and a time frame? Right, yeah, well, great question, Teresa, like, and... um as I've shared maybe in the past that I wasn't really looking to study this or even teach it at all. Um, right. I probably have it's just like you or many people listening that are like, what are you talking about God's calendar? You know, yeah. but actually, actually it's in the Bible. I mean, if you're reading, um, especially in the old Testament and, and in the new, it's going to talk about um, it was the 10th day of the seventh month. And, and, you know, either you, you skip over that or you go, oh, that's nice. Or you look at it according to our calendar. But, you know, you have to uh, read everything in context and in the time it was written. Mm -hmm. And in the time those things was written, the Gregorian calendar didn't even exist, you know? So so we're looking at the the biblical calendar. And so it's there, you know? And um, I feel like God, when, when I started discovering this and even teaching it, I felt like the calendar, the biblical calendar was almost like covered over with dust after years and years oh. and years. And, and, and his spirit was blowing things off and it's being revealed. And um, in Daniel, it talks about how um, the enemy tries to change times and seasons and laws. And I know we can look at that with laws, you know, with abortion, mm-hmm. marriage, all this stuff, right? But yeah. times, times, you know. That's so, interesting. Um, he wants us to forget about God's calendar, not even know it exists. Mm. And really, um, Teresa, it's not to add another thing to your to-do list or like, okay, now I have to start following the calendar. No, you know, it's just having an awareness of it. Mm. And really, the the calendar guides us but it but it really is just what i found after studying for almost 10 years now that it points to the true nature of god and his love for us that he's a good shepherd and he wants to encourage us lead us and guide us in every season and that's That's so true that's what i've found to be true i'm Mm going to grab your book um I know yeah. in, in your book, like you have the Gregorian calendar, if you guys can see this, if we're on mm-hmm. podcast, um, and then you have God's calendar laid over. I love this um, because it like all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay. Right. Oh, what does that mean? Yeah. And then again, you just lay it out. And it's up to us, you know, Mm -hmm. to read the word, to study the word and to dig deeper into the word. And so that's what I love about your book. And you change it up each year, don't you? Yes, Yes, I do. Always something a little bit different in it. So um, I know we're in the month of November. Okay, so let's talk about what Mm -hmm. spiritual month are we in and what's the number of God's month? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are entering into the biblical month of Sheshvan or Heshvan, however you want to pronounce it. Okay. And I'm going to throw, I'm going to uh, show you the little flashcard. This is the chalkboard for the month of Heshvan. And um, it's the eighth month in okay. God's spiritual calendar. And eight is a number of new beginnings. And, mm. you know, when, when you look at the card, I don't know if it's a giveaway, but there's a big boat on this card. <laughs> <laughs> could that and, be an uh, ark? <laughs> so could it be? Yeah. Back, you know, 
um, think back to Sunday school. But yeah, so this is the month when the flood occurred. And so, you know, it's really, it's, it's interesting because if you think about so many people, they know about Noah's Ark, mm -hmm. even non-Christians, they know about right. Noah's Ark, but do you, do you actually know when it happened? Well, now you know when it happened, you know, and it's right there in Genesis. It, it lays it all out for us. What day, all this stuff. So here's the month we're in right now, the month okay. of Hezvan. Yes. And it looks like, okay, it looks like the Ark and Noah is right? a big part of this month where you said it points mm -hmm. to new beginning. So um, talk about that. Like how does Noah and the Ark um, mm -hmm. connect with this month? I mean, what's so sure. important about it? Yeah. Well, again, it's always going to point to Jesus, right? So, so in the natural in the physical, we could say, okay, this is when the flood occurred mm -hmm. and what happened after, you know, they got into the ark, they were saved, you know, mm -hmm. and basically they came out, it was a whole new world, right? So it was a new, right. new beginning. And so that's what it was in the natural. And this is just very basic, right? Yeah, no, but in, in the, in, in the spirit though, it's a picture of what we, what, what we do, you know, we're living in this world of chaos, mm -hmm. you know, and Jesus says, come into the ark of Jesus and you'll be saved and you, and you're a new creation, right. And you have a new beginning. So, um, so that's just like a basic yeah. look oh, at I like that. that. Yeah. Can mm -hmm. we talk about the animals? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So did the animals, were, was there a pair of animals? What, because I think there was more than like a pair. I mean, I remember, you know, you hear, yeah. you hear it as a child. They can, they came in two by two, right. you know, in pairs. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. explain that if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I would encourage everyone out there, even myself, and uh, just to read yeah. through that portion again in Genesis, because you think you know it, you know, and like, yeah, I don't have to read sure. that again. You know, I have, I have the idea. But um, there's so many details in there that we overlook, and I'm sure the Lord wants to highlight certain things to us. But as far as the animals go, they did come two by two, mm -hmm. but there were clean animals that um, came in sevens. And um, and that, I believe, was for the sacrifices when he got out of the ark. That's you know, it said that when he got out, he built an altar, yes. you know, so what did he do with that altar? He was sacrificing on that altar, you know, so um yeah. And, and the other thing is how the animals came to him, you know, right. it wasn't like he had to be like, okay, everybody you know? blew, or uh, blew a yeah. whistle or something right. like that. Come on. Right. Right. And I do think Teresa that, um, how this ties into our seasons, because it is like hurricane season, right. Mm -hmm. In, in our world. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. animals know, right. When there's yes. a storm coming, they, they flee or they get they go for protection and so i think the lord put that in them um in their makeup so that they would just automatically come to noah it wasn't some yes. it wasn't like this thing that he had to do yeah you know and i was thinking mm -hmm. gosh these animals and noah and his family are on the ark for a while and you're thinking mm -hmm. how does this work of course god's plans are always perfect his timing's mm -hmm. always perfect but mm -hmm. I, I you know were they sleeping were they away yeah. what, i mean what was going on <laughs> Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, I, I always thought, yeah, kind of like, oh my gosh, how could they have, you know, it's almost like a wild ride in some, in Disney like world or some water or ride. Yes. Yeah, it's like, those poor people, you know, but um, I really believe because God loves us, mm -hmm. he wouldn't throw us in a place and then have us like beat up and thrown around. And, you know, I, I just, that's not the nature of God, you know? And so I believe that he put them in hibernation. Yeah. I really did. Oh, that's interesting. I, I, I do. And, you know, animals go into hibernation and That's I believe right. that he put a sleep, just like he put a sleep on Adam. I believe he put a sleep on Noah and his whole family and then woke him up. That's that, my personal belief. That, but, that would be a really yeah. nice nap. <laughs> really yeah. Nice nap. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, Noah had to be so obedient to God, especially it had mm -hmm. not rained and he hadn't seen yes. that. No one had seen that. And here he is building something that's going to float and you know, mm -hmm. it was just pure obedience from Noah to yeah. do what God has called him to do. And I think we can relate to that because sometimes it seems a little crazy and you're like, well, I don't know about that, but you know, 
I've learned to be obedient quickly. And so when you hear from the Lord and he's saying, yeah. go here, go there, do this, do that, just do it mm -hmm. out of obedience and uh, the blessings Amen. will flow. Um, we better take a real quick break, okay? Yeah. Um, but we'll be right back with more. Sounds Shape great. Everyone stay tuned. Yeah. Welcome back to Shape by Faith. We shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. Christine Vallis, author and teacher of His Appointed Times is on Shape mm -hmm. by Faith. And what month again are we talking about, Christine? We are in the month of Hezvan. Here it is. Beautiful Noah's Ark month of Hezvan. Which <laughs> is November for us. Um, yes. So what is there, a, what month number is Hezvan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the eighth month of the spiritual calendar okay. right here, number eight. So we okay. were talking about how it's a month of new beginnings. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about Noah and the ark. So I want to continue because right. I love Noah and the ark. I mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. hearing about that as a child and even as an adult. So when you, when you talk yeah. about the rain, you know, I mean, here he is. He, how long did it take him to build the ark? Yeah. You know, I think that was years. quite, quite some time. Yeah. I think it was like many, many years. Like, Maybe. I don't think like two or three, I'm thinking like 10, 20 years. I, yeah. And you yeah. know, who has a great um, resource on this is uh, a book called the Genesis record. Um, oh, the last okay. name is Morris. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a wonderful account of, of um, Genesis and the flood. So okay. that might be a great resource, but I know it, it wasn't like, Oh, just a year. And he popped this thing up. No, right. He was that at thing was massive. Long time. I was going to say, and, and, and Teresa, I think too, the preparation time, yeah. was if you think about it it's um god wanted everyone to be saved right so mm -hmm. i think he was giving uh the preparation time wasn't fast because god wanted more people to come and give more time more extension even if we think about it now like why didn't why isn't god coming back why isn't jesus coming back mm -hmm. right now you know because mm -hmm. he loves people and he wants everyone to be saved so he's his his kindness is is uh, happening in, um, what do you say? His, his, um, timing is, right. it may seem slow to us, you know, but it, but he's doing it because he loves people. Yeah. He, so I think the same yeah. is true with the ark. You would think, you would think, mm -hmm. that, you know, if Noah is warning people, he's telling people, um, you know, mm. that the rains are coming and they're looking at him like he's crazy. You would think a few would like pop on the ark and go okay i know safe here but no <laughs> <laughs> they didn't just I know. family okay mm -hmm. so when did the rain actually start i mean was he already yeah. in the ark what i mean how did that happen yeah so you can look at genesis 7 okay uh, for these dates i mean they're they're right there sure. um so the flood started it says in genesis 7 on the 17th day of the month. Um, but Noah and his family entered in on the 10th day. Okay. So they were in there, you know, like a whole week before. Right. right? And mm -hmm. um, like, so it wasn't like, all right, get in there. Boom. You know, it's just like this fast. Yeah. Thing. They had time to kind of settle in and then I guess have a last call for anybody that wants to come in. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. But, but so there was this time of, of preparation and actually Teresa, that number 10, mm -hmm. um, is a, is a number that is like a, a day of entry. We even see it when Jesus came into Jerusalem, it was on the 10th day of the month when he came in on Palm Sunday. Also when the, when they had the lambs, uh, into the house, the Passover lambs, that was mm -hmm. on the 10th. So it's, it's another picture of, of, of entry of, of, um, this 10th day. So here again, we see it on the 10th of Hezbon and then the rain started seven days later and, you know, 40 days, it yes. did rain and flood, right? Not just rain, but it says like the, the earth opened up. And so, I mean, there was lots of things going on, you know, water mm -hmm. from the heavens and from the earth. And so, and it did happen all that for 40 days, but it was actually the earth was covered. If we read through that whole account, um, rains or, you know, water covered the earth for over a year. 
So it wasn't just like 40 days is long enough, right? If you ask That's me, right. But, I mean, you know, you go into places that have been hit by a hurricane or, and just because the rain stops doesn't mean the thing's over, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was the case. That's incredible. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when did God call Noah out of the ark? His, yeah, so yeah. that was on the 27th of the month, but it was a year later. Okay, okay. Yeah. So he went in on the 17th, and then he came out on the 27th one year later. So one year and 10 days later. Very mm -hmm. interesting. So what's the first yeah. thing that Noah did? I know it was important what he did when he exited the ark. Yeah, when he when he got out, the first thing he did, you would think would be like, okay, let me get my, let me set up my house. Let That's me, right. you know, get myself situated. Or kiss the you know, ground the first, and say, praise Yeah, you. really. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Where am I? You know, mm -hmm. but um, the first thing he did was he built an altar. Mm. He did build an altar to the Lord. And I think that's where those um, seven clean animals were there, you know, and then, then mm -hmm. they could reproduce after that. But, um, but that's when he exited. And, you know, something though, about when he entered, um, God didn't say, Hey, get in this ark, Noah, get in no. here. You know, he invited him in, mm. in the, in the, in the Hebrew, you know, it's the word is come into the ark. It's, it's really, um, an invitation. God didn't force him in. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same with us. You know, Jesus says, come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden and burdened, right. I will give you rest. And so you know, he wasn't forced to go in. So it's just that picture of entering into the ark and you will find rest. And actually Noah's name means rest. Oh, that's so, so really beautiful. Cool. So the mm -hmm. ark is a picture of salvation entering Amen. into rest. That's beautiful. You know, I yeah. hadn't really thought about that before. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk mm -hmm. about, I know um, our sense of smell is connected to this month. How yeah. is our sense of smell connected? Yeah, so um, you know, when when um Noah offered that sacrifice, it it put off an aroma that was pleasing to the Lord, uh -huh. you know, and we read about that in the Old Testament. So yeah, every month has a an action and a body part. Yeah. And this month it is connected to smell. Mm -hmm. And so I believe it is pointing to the fragrance. When we offer our hearts to the Lord, we, we're not sacrificing animals. You right, know? right. It is finished. It is finished. It is done. And the only thing that we need to do, the way we enter in is giving our hearts, right? And trusting mm. in what Jesus has done. And that is a beautiful aroma to the Lord. So, so, and that actually brings rest. You know, I think when mm -hmm. something smells like it, sometimes it'll wake you up in the middle of light. What is that? think you know <laughs> but but when there's like even if you went into a spa they'll have like the lovely lavender yes. or whatever and it brings rest and so I think when we offer our hearts it's it is a fragrance to the Lord and not only to him but to us as well and so so it's just all pointing to rest mm. you know even even the sense of smell mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's the Hebrew letter that's associated with this month yeah, you always question. have a letter too. Yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, right here on the chalkboard in the upper left corner. It's okay. the Hebrew letter Nun, N U N, mm. and it looks like that. Okay. It's actually uh, a picture of Messiah. It means to sprout, um, it means a sun. And it's basically, again, pointing to Jesus. And actually, um, they call this month the month of Messiah. Because actually in this month, Teresa, um, there are really no appointed feasts okay. or, or fast. Like there's not like um, Hanukkah or Yom Kippur. There's no holiday in this okay. month. So the Jews believe that that Messiah is going to come in this month. So when you're looking at the Hebrew letter, it's a picture of Messiah. And I think they connected that because they say, well, he's probably coming in this month. Mm -hmm. you know, so nice, nice. Yeah. Let's That's take a, connects. Okay. Let's take another quick break and uh, we'll finish up with this month. Okay. So everyone stay tuned for more shape by faith. Mm -hmm. Okay. Welcome back to shape by faith. We shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. Christine, the month again is. It is. Let me grab my flashcard here. I can grab it. 
Heshvan. I'm going to get mine too. Month of Heshvan. Woo! <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, the C is silent. So when I first looked at this, yeah. I'm like, is that Sheshvan? I didn't know. I know. Heshvan. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you talked about um, the number eight with new mm -hmm. beginnings being so important. Yes. And you've been talking about Jesus, uh, the Messiah this month, pointing to mm -hmm. him um, mm -hmm. for his return. Um, yeah. What about God's covenant? You know, whenever I think about knowing the ark, I think about the rainbow. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So why don't you mm -hmm. talk about that, the importance of yeah. God's covenant? Yeah. So, and it was, I have to say, very fun to draw that beautiful rainbow there with the boat. And um, yeah, I mean, when you think about learning the story in Sunday school or church, whatever, you think about the boat, you think about the rainbow and God put that rainbow there in the sky to be a covenant of promise that he would never again flood the earth, like destroy the earth by water. Mm -hmm. Never again would that happen. And, you know, even in history, if you look and every culture talks about having some type of having a flood, you know, so, right. so even, you know, outside the Bible, it talks about that. Um, but God did give this rainbow and it had to be there for the first time because it never rained before. Right. So you can't have a rainbow without rain. And so, so that, that picture was there of, of uh, his covenant. And I believe that, you know, it also points we see it in scripture that there's a rainbow around the throne of God, right? And so oh. it's just pointing to the loving, yeah, yeah. I hadn't thought in about that before. About that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, get out your Bible app or something, Google rainbow and see the scripture where it pops up. And sure. so there's a rainbow around his throne, you know, and so it's just the beauty of God, the loving kindness of the Lord. And, um, and I think Teresa growing up, in the 70s and 80s, right? Mm -hmm. um, I always wanted like a rainbow shirt. Like I yeah. had a shirt that had rainbows started over here all the way across down my arm. I was like, woo, I'm cool. <laughs> you know, I had the suspenders. I think I had, you know, anything I can get, like a rainbow necklace, everything. Yeah. You know? And so, so, and I think even today, so many kids love rainbows, right? And, but I do want to mention, you know, that a lot of times we'll, because of how culture is now mm -hmm. and with the rainbow now is so heavily connected to, um, you know, the gay population and that's their symbol and that's their flag and everything. But really it's like, gosh, like, I don't want to have to give up that rainbow, <laughs> you know, like what if I want to wear a rainbow? I can't wear it because now people are going to think I'm gay or something, you know, like I actually right. have a little rainbow shirt and um, it has a little rainbow here. And um, my mother-in-law actually, for me, stitched on there Genesis underneath, mm, you know? Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and and really, like, you know, this is the, the first um, covenant, you know, a covenant with God's people. And it was given to God's people, yes. you know, for a promise. And so the enemy likes to pervert all these things that God has made as beautiful as they are he's gonna pervert them and say okay god made this beautiful and let me take it and yes. let me take it on a different way he does it with the stars right so so i just want to encourage people out there to um you know let it be a testimony when mm -hmm. someone has a, a rainbow you know talking to another person who is following that lifestyle or something and god does not hate people that are gay he loves people just hates that sin that they're involved in because it, it doesn't produce anything you know it's it's not god's character it's not his best at all we know that right that, that's so right. anyway i just wanted to to bring that up because um i don't know what your thoughts are on that Teresa. But. well i know the enemy we know full well the enemy tries to kill steal and destroy and and like you said yes. pervert like the enemy mm -hmm. the enemy cannot create so the enemy takes what right. the lord has Amen. created and made for his purposes and then he tweaks it he twists it he perverts it he tries to mold it into his own when we know mm -hmm. it's from god you know and i think he does that with any with everything it's 
especially with our identity. I think you look mm -hmm. at what's going on in the world right now and do kids right. know who they are? And I mm -hmm. mean, you know, it's clear in the word that there's yes. uh, male and female. And so mm -hmm. if you look around at the culture and what's going on, we can clearly see from a biblical standpoint that no, God made man and woman and no, God created mm -hmm. the rainbow is his covenant. So yes. I, I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, we mm -hmm. have to be so careful and it's like, yeah, it's almost like you're afraid to wear something because you're like, well, that's, you know, the enemy's taking that mm -hmm. for his identity, but that's not right. his identity, you know? Yes. But isn't yes. that like the enemy to do mm -hmm. that? I mean, he does mm -hmm. that with everything. And especially, like mm -hmm. you said, the rainbow. I love yeah. rainbows. I absolutely, I, I mean, <laughs> God's promises. I know when we purchased the farm that we live on yes. like, so many years ago that we prayed about, about it and we saw a double rainbow that day. Yes. And it's not like you're mm -hmm. trying to look for things like, oh, that's mm -hmm. a sign. But I'm like, we went with it. I'm like, that's, that's God's covenant. Promise. Okay, we're going to do it. Amen. And so each time and then where we live right now on the farm, we've seen so many double rainbows and like, Lord, thank you yeah. so much. It just reminds Amen. me of the Lord, you know, yes. I can't help yes. but think of God when I see yes. the rainbow, but you're Amen. right. The, the enemy twists that perverts it. And like, he mm -hmm. wants you to think, no, it means this over here when it doesn't, it doesn't. So be bold, <laughs> be bold in the Lord Amen. and stand Amen. on his word, yes. <laughs> you know, Christine, I mean, we could go on and on and on. Amen. I mean, but our time is up, and yes, I, I love your teaching. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much for being a monthly guest yeah. on Shade by Faith. Amen. Been so fun. Thanks so much. Oh, you're mm -hmm. welcome. And thank you for listening. I'm Teresa Rowe. Everyone have a blessed day. Bye. Thank you for listening to Shape by Faith with Teresa Rowe. Remember to visit shapebyfaith.com to find out more about workouts, the TV show, podcasts, blogs, Shape by Faith products, and much more.